Hey, this video is on what I call regret minimization, which is a kind of a tool or a way of thinking that will help us to make better decisions and I think ultimately be happier. So I'm gonna show you a quick video of Jeff Bezos talking about this and then I'll explain some of the psychological science as well as some other stories around how we can actually make better decisions. I, Here you um, go. went to my boss and said to him, you know, I'm gonna go do this crazy thing and I'm gonna start this uh, this company selling books online and this is something that I already been talking to him about uh, in a sort of more general context but then he said let's go on a walk and we went on a two-hour walk in Central Park in New York City and the conclusion of that was this he said you know this actually sounds like a really good idea to me but it sounds like it would be a better idea for somebody who didn't already have a good job <laughs> Uh, and he convinced me to think about it for 48 hours before making a final decision. And so I went away and, and, and was trying to find the right framework in which to make that kind of big decision. And, you know, I'd already talked to my wife about this, and she was very supportive and said, look, you know, uh, you can count me in 100%, um, whatever you want to do. You know, it's true. She had married this kind of, you know, fairly stable guy in a stable career path and now he wanted to go do this crazy thing but she was a hundred percent supportive so it really was a decision that I had to make for myself and the and the framework I found which made the decision incredibly easy was uh, what what I called which only a nerd would call a regret minimization framework so I wanted to project myself forward to age 80 and say, okay now I'm looking back on my life I want to have minimized the number of regrets I have. And you know, uh, I knew that when I was 80, I was not going to regret having tried this. I was not going to regret having wanted, you know, trying to participate in this thing called the internet that I thought was going to be a really big deal. I knew that if I failed, I wouldn't regret that. But I knew the one thing I might regret is not ever having tried. And I knew that that would haunt me every day. Um, and so when I thought about it that way, it was an incredibly easy decision. Uh, and I think that's a very good, it's, it's, if you can project yourself out to age 80 and sort of think, what will I think at that time, it gets you away from some of the daily pieces of confusion. You know, I left uh, this Wall Street firm in the middle of the year. When you do that, you walk away from your annual bonus. And that's the kind of thing that in the short term can confuse you. But if you think about the long term, uh, then you can really make good life decisions that you won't regret later. So what we have in this video is what you can think of as a kind of a mental model or like a frame for making better decisions. And now I wanted to do some research into the science, if there was any science, and the psychology behind this regret minimization model. Now, I personally stumbled upon the same model thinking about taking a gap year. This was uh, in high school before going into college and I had the same line of thinking. I was like, look, it's kind of risky maybe because it may not go well to take a year off to live in Central America, to travel through Europe. But I was like, even if it's a waste of time or I don't know, something bad happens, I don't enjoy it. I'm like when I'm like 60 years old, everyone's telling me to you know do things and live while you're young. It's like when I'm 60 or 70 or 80 years old and I look back, it's like, would I ever regret like taking a year off to travel the world? Like probably not, but I may regret never having done some cool thing like that. So I kind of arrived at this and, and later I found this video. And so you may be like Jackson, you're full of crap. You just stole it from Jeff Bezos, whatever. But he at least published it first. So I have to give him credit. So now there is a study I found that kind of gets at this. So this is a study titled uh, the temporal pattern to the experience of regret, which means kind of the, the pattern of the timing of the experience of regret. And what they found is that um, research suggests like this, that people tend to regret inaction more than action. And so it kind of aligns with this regret and minimization framework, but it's a little bit more specific. And that means that we tend to regret the things that we don't do more than the things that we do. So we see uh, common regrets are things like not going to school, not investing in the business, uh, not spending time with certain people or as much time as we would have liked. And in this study, they did kind of interviews and surveys to investigate with people. 
And what they found is, of course, don't get me wrong, there are times when you will do something and you will regret it. <laughs> See, we've all done that. But what they find is that that tends to be more short-term pain, whereas long-term, it is inaction or not doing things that leads to regrets. And then there's another piece. So, so that's the first piece, right? We're trying to minimize regrets. So we're thinking in terms of when I'm 60 or 70 or 80 years old, what will I regret the least when I'm making decisions right now? And now we understand a bit more detail, which is saying that we tend to regret inaction more than action. And a final piece of literature that I thought related to this that I thought would be helpful for you uh, is it's not a very traditional uh, psychological study, but it's sort of a, I guess, a life experience sort of study. And that there was a woman named Bronnie Ware who was a palliative care nurse. Now, this is someone who specializes in taking care of people as they're in the process of dying. And she, over many years, actually kind of cataloged the top regrets of people as they passed away. And she wrote a book on this called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, A Life Transformed by the Dearly Departing. And so again, it's kind of a, an informal study, but she's talking to all of these, spending time with all of these different people who are about to die and figuring out what the top regrets were. And she gave five. So I'll give them to you. Number five, I wish I had let myself be happier. Number four, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Number three, I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. Number two, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I'm guilty of that one sometimes. And number one, the top regret of the dying is I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life others expected of me. So as we wrap up this video, right, you now have a very useful kind of, again, mental model or decision-making tool to take whatever you're trying to figure out right now, whether it's a big life decision or maybe even like daily or weekly life type things of how you're spending your time is you can kind of tap into if I was 70 or 80 years old, what would I regret? What wouldn't I regret? How can I kind of minimize regrets over the course of my lifetime? And then you have a bit more detail as you think about that. It's more likely that you'll regret inaction as opposed to action. And you have some things to keep in mind as common traps, common uh, things we fall into that we end up regretting. So these are things like um, caring too much about others' expectations, <laughs> number one, uh, working too hard or too much, not expressing your feelings, not keeping in touch with people you care about, and just kind of not letting yourself be as happy as you could be. And so I hope that some of this research uh, and I guess stories from folks like me and Jeff Bezos uh, will help you to make much better decisions and ultimately live a happier life. So here's a video that YouTube suggests you'll like. As always on this channel, you can find both science and stories and tools to help you be at your best in both work and in life as we study happiness together. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.